Rush. And... Welcome back to another episode of Fresh and Buds. I am your host, Tommy Fresh. And as always, you are all my buds. It is episode 62, and I'm joined by one of my favorite people, one of Flesh and Blood's favorite people in the community. It is Mr. Ethan Van Sant. You know him as Man Sant on YouTube. How you doing, buddy? Whoa, what an intro. I hope your words ring true. I'd love to <laughs> to be as loved as you make me off as. Um, no, it's super, super cool to be here. Love love being here. Love talking to you in person, even digitally. It's all good. Yeah, man. Well, I, I, you know, we have uh, a lot in common, especially with like the things we like to play. And I'm sure that people know at this point that we both love Leviathan. And, and I, I think you're truly just a, an awesome person. I love chatting with you you, you kind of emanate the the big buds energy that you know i i really enjoy so um we're, we have a lot to talk about today but i do want to uh before we get to that i want to shout out to the patreon which uh, you can find in the link tree in the show notes uh where you know it can help uh keep the lights on the mic's hot and you know it, it's it's pretty cool you get some little extra bonus apps uh you get nice little uh blue cheese sleeves that you can use on talishar now which is very fun you get to submit decks for our, our fresh text and 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 all that kind of fun stuff um obviously not required and and um you know it's it's it, helpful oh also something new i've mentioned it before we have in the buzz discord a patreon exclusive like little channel called the romping club and if you uh join the patreon you get a romping club membership card which is kind of cool so um also, the cool thing about the Robin Club is you kind of hang out in there while I'm doing the Bud Rush Bellow live podcast Wednesdays at 930 Eastern with our friend Gary. You know him as Mr. Viz. It's a lot of fun over there. That's on the YouTube. So check that out. And then also I'd like to shout out Greg, our producer. Hi, Greg. Greg's not here this week. <laughs> oh, they can't see and, me wave. I wave to you, Craig. I got you too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Usually he cuts himself in there, so we'll see if he does this week. Um, so now let's get to let's get to you, Ethan. Mm. Um, first of all, a ton has happened since we last talked. <laughs> uh, mm. but I do want to know what is new and exciting with your channel right now. Oh, well, that's an easy one because you're a part of it. Uh, there is this Clash tournament a-brewing over on the Man Saint YouTube channel. The announcement went over super well, this Clash format. I think it was like a week ago or so at this point. Um, but that was that was a big hit. There was something brewing in the background for a little bit. Uh, this whole idea being that uh, Team Covenant was really the first ones to start the dialogue that at least I picked up on, complaining a bit about the lack of um, thematics behind like a young hero format. Like where why is blitz this format where you're at your full power just at less life like where's the interim uh of, of power like commoner's not quite it right commoner is mm -hmm. way too toned down you lose a lot of hero identity um but then you go blitz which is full power so where's that where's that middling uh, you know format and we we tried to find that out here with clash uh so clash i'm not going to go over the entire rule set right now um but you can see that debut announcement video of the format itself with the rule set with deck building support on February with a tournament series that's going to be coming out after Worlds uh, that Tommy Fresh right here is a part of, along with a bunch of other content creators. So that's been like, as far as the videos go, that's definitely the, the main feature of what's on my channel right now, just bringing excitement for that. But I also live stream now a lot. Uh, that's been <laughs> a big change over on the Mansant YouTube. Um, just kind of had a lot of downtime leading into some of these bigger events and um, wanted to you know, just practice and, and make sure I was being held accountable to actually practice because, you know, I, I talk a lot about, oh yeah, I play Levi all the time, this, that, whatever, <laughs> but that's actually been a bit tougher since I moved out here to New York because I don't get as many Armory events in. It's really, really spread out here. So the streaming was a way to just have some accountability for, you know, me actually playing these games, actually staying relevant with my Levi knowledge and also starting to explore other things with community support that kind of can help fill those gaps. Otherwise, um, that are, you know, so glaring when you jump into a hero alone, uh, like a new hero that you don't really know what you're doing. Well, hey, we've got a whole chat, sometimes a hundred strong of people 
giving genuinely good advice. It's really fun. Uh, so it's been a great, great part of my life these days. Uh, and I, I do it four times a week. Pretty, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Every week, that's, Monday through Thursday. That's pretty cool. And now I, I know that, uh, you know, uh, a lot of folks are, 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 have turned to some streaming now that we have stuff like Talishar now, but I do know that you were straight up streaming games at your LGS mm. at, 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 a, at a point. Um, how have you enjoyed Talishar? Do you think this is this is where it should be? Do you think are there are there any kind of improvements, or maybe even they should take a somewhat of a step back in in respect to LSS, or or is it is it a, a nice um, spot for for players like us to to kind of practice and and get some games in and even try new things? Oh, I absolutely love Talishar, and uh, you know, not to be so solipsistic here, but like you know, my situation in particular, moving out to the boonies of upstate New York. If Talishar didn't exist, because it kind of started to become popular right when I moved as well, like in August. Um, if Talishar didn't exist, Flesh and Blood would have legitimately died for me. There are people, mm-hmm. uh, and they've been living in these kind of situations before I have, who have somehow stuck with card games. Man, kudos to y'all. I don't know how you do it. It's so <laughs> tough to not have a local LGS to just show up, play games, um, and even just try to like, poach off players from other games that you're you're friendly with that you're like hey we'll try out my game next flesh and blood all this stuff you just don't get any of that if there's no lgs and so that was my situation and uh yeah you're right like i, I streamed a lot back when i had lgs's to go to it was all around michigan i'd bring my little kit we'd stream armories rtns ProQuest, and it was amazing uh and i just don't get to do that but i loved the you know consistency of activity in bringing you know content to the channel just games and all that so Talishar was perfect. Talishar really came out and blew my mind because uh, it reminds me of um, just the ease of kind of old school web-based clients. Like I used to play uh, Duelist a ton. That was all web-based mm-hmm. client. There was um, uh, Crucible for Keyforge. That was web-based client. Like there's there's a huge space for this because it's so accessible. And I think Talishar right now, the fact that they've mastered so much of the coding behind the gameplay makes it so you really just need to focus on your own sequencing your sideboarding um you know you're paying attention to what your opponent's doing and it kind of cuts out some of the the mechanics that you have to manually do in a format like tts and so i'm actually a huge fan of the bit of automation it adds because i do feel comfortable in just me actually you know remembering my tunic triggers i don't have that (laughs) complaint other people are like well if I just play Talisher all the time, I'm going to fit my tunic in real life. Well, okay. Not, not me, all right? <laughs> not me. I, I'm not going to have that complaint. Uh, I just oh. love it. I, I really just love it. And the people behind it are really cool as well. Very receptive to feedback. If you ever want something changed, literally make a Twitter post. And they probably respond and at least say, yeah, hey, it's a good idea. So, yeah, I, I really think they're in a good spot. Yeah. And, and you know, uh, personally myself, I... I um was wary of 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 Talishar when it came out and I was like well you know I I don't want to feel like I never get to play in the flesh and blood again and that hasn't been true you know I I'm, I'm just always cautious about it and and I will say that the folks over there at Talishar have been really uh, helpful for me you know even even when uh I mentioned at the beginning of the show getting the sleeves on there which I know you have some as well which is which is such a cool thing they're very pro creator and um that's awesome so yeah and it, and it actually it's made streaming such a viable option for for content creators and and a lot of times you know sometimes streams they get you know a, an extra revenue service right or, or or for for creators because it's 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 not cheap being a creator. And, and, and sometimes when you stream, like people want to like interact and donate and stuff like that, which is really cool. So it's, it's kind of opened up a new, uh, kind of a new era for, for content creators in, in this game, which is, which is pretty cool. Now, speaking of like testing and then, you mm. know, putting in the work you've played in quite a few competitive tournaments lately. Uh, the pro tour in Lille, 
and led to yeah. a short break from our girl Leviah, which you did talk about on Fable Academy's channel, which I, I, I probably is you know must be one of their highest viewed videos because it, it that's really how was. much this yeah. Yeah, this community cares about you and your love for Leviah. We're like, what is happening? Uh, how do you feel about the Lil experience overall and the decision to step away from Leviah for just a little bit after? Well, you know what's weird about that is even after I went like 07 on the first Pro Tour weekend and had just like the most miserable run with Leviah, just throwing myself at Chains and Starvos and hating myself, I still stuck with her because I saw it more as a problem with the format than mm -hmm. her and her her own hurdles that she has to overcome. You know, I was I, I was still comfortable doing that but pro tour leal was actually quite a good format for levi i'd done a ton of testing with levi going into it uh really really felt good in just some of the really high level play that i'd gotten to jam in that extra week before the tournament when i was staying with like michael fang yuanji um there were there were just really good games that i got to play I felt really confident for once i'm playing against some of the best of the best and still holding my own and it's on levi of all things so I went into that tournament super confident and ended up going 7-7, seven, seven, which is, I mean, a lot of other big names out there ended up 7-7 seven, seven looking at, you know, Arsenal pass for one. So I can't be like too upset that the fact that mm -hmm. I was on Leviathan I didn't actually bring some tier S deck that I really thought was going to win the whole thing. I just wanted to bring my deck and try to take it to the highest of its performance. But the problem about that run was looking back at why I lost some of the games I lost. So I went 4-2 in draft. That was great. But then we looked at the CC games. I'm trying to pick apart. Well, okay, what could have I done differently there for that loss to be different? And unfortunately, there were those Levi moments just a little too often where it's like, okay, hold up a second. That game was a 1-2-1. Okay, we got to discount that. Oh, that game was no hand to turn off blood debt. I got to discard that. Oh, that game was all reds and I couldn't pay for anything. Lost tempo, died. And you try to like just say, oh, you know, that, that won't happen too much. Won't happen too much. Shrug over it. But when I look back at that entire tournament run, it really happened too much. Like it, mm -hmm. it really happened like three or four times in, uh, what was it, eight rounds of CC, which is too much. I would expect once or twice you get the punt games. It just happens. It's okay. It's a card game. Levi is not the most consistent beast in the world. Uh, but it was a little bit too much because the actual losses also come collecting you know like when you face briars and viscerize those just aren't inherently tough as well so you can't just pretend your only losses will be to variants your mm -hmm. losses will also be two bad matchups so those combined really made leviah just not perform well and i was a little frustrated um so i made that video after getting a wonderful <laughs> lunch uh kind of like a brunch with fable academy uh just kind of on a whim where he's like oh hey like i want to do an interview what can we talk about and i'm like okay well let me just rant about leviah for a little bit <laughs> and in that video was when I decided, okay, look, let's just try one event. Let's just try one event off Leviah and see what happens. Uh, you know, by phrasing it that way, I hoped I wouldn't just lose all my League of Leviah <laughs> followers <laughs> because I've gotten flack in the past, like the one freaking pro quest where I took Starvo, everyone got mad. But, you know, I tried to say it where, look, just give me one tournament where you don't get mad at me that I don't play Leviah. So we tried it. We went to nationals. And we played Phi. And Phi, honestly, not the right deck for me, but this is a whole different saga. I don't know if we're going into it, Tommy. But yeah, I no, lost. Hey, listen, you go. Oh, okay. Well, you want to go yeah. into the FedEx bit right now? <laughs> no, 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 no. No, no, no. Okay, okay, about, okay. We'll let's save talk it. We'll save about. It. Uh, I, wanna, I, I do. Well, okay. Here, here's the deal. So uh, I do, I do want to touch on your kind of departure right it wasn't a full mm -hmm. departure and we all knew yeah. that you couldn't stay away right mm -hmm. and we all know and that and I, I understand when you say oh i was a little bit worried that my legal levia would be uh like upset um mm -hmm. i think in reality and, and it's a lot different from um the starvo thing right and you know i think people is just mad at starvo not at you <laughs> if that yeah. makes sense um which so. uh that people had good good reason to um I, as someone who plays a ton of Leviathan as well, uh, I we we get it right. You have a, a rough day at the office with Leviathan. You're like, I don't know if I could do it again, like next mm -hmm. weekend. You know, I need to like get a refresh. I need to sleeve up 
Bolton mm. or something like that. I need to feel something different before I can come back to her warm tentacle embrace. Now, um, I think it's warm. I'm feeling slimy. <laughs> it's a little slimy. <laughs> it's it's something like that. But uh, you know, I so I think for the most part we all understood. Which and 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 I think that is a testament as to why uh, Fable Academy's video was so popular. And also that's very much like Alex to just be like, hey, let's let's talk about some real stuff right now. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> which yeah. I, uh, I love. So, but yeah, so you you did you take you took Phi to you, you mentioned nationals, yes, right, yes, but US Nets. but you before that you took if if I'm correct you took Phi to Battle Harden in oh uh, up, upstate New York. Oh, you're right. I totally space man. All the Phi games just blend together because they're literally the <laughs> same no matter when or what you play against. Um, yes, that's right. I did just randomly try Phi uh, at a Battle Hardened. Um, in ohio yeah i think it was columbus ohio funny enough we're oh, going up another one already or syracuse yeah, yeah. no 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 syracuse oh, no. was okay. a different run this was okay. a columbus battle hardened uh run by seg con okay. uh yeah i like randomly took this five deck and it was a kadachi five with like pursuit of knowledge it was just kind of a joke uh, and i made top eight at the the pt or the rtn kind of like last chance mm-hmm. Uh, like nationals invite tournament, whatever they were calling those. I made top eight and all the people who didn't have invites just kind of scooped in the people who, or sorry, the people who had invites scooped in the people who didn't because that was the only prize for that event. So that was cool. Like just made top eight pretty easily uh, playing Phi and then tuned the deck up a little bit for the next day. And unfortunately bubbled ninth at the battle hardened. Uh, I was five and one. I lost round three out of six or yeah, I think it was six rounds. I lost round three, so I actually felt pretty okay. Because really, it's if you take a round one or two loss, then even if you go X1 from then on, like you're you're still just out. But I lost mm-hmm. round three, so I'm like, okay, I'm probably in, and we'll, we'll play it out and try. And we go 5-1. I feel great. They announce it. I end up ninth. Oh. And, uh, oh, man, it was just heartbreaking because uh, I didn't really you know, want to play five for any other reason than to just try for the top eight. And to see that pretty much i made it but i don't really get to say i made it because on paper i was ninth it was it hurt it definitely hurt um so we had to run it back just one more event with Phi. i tried him again at nationals and uh did go 4-0 in the cc event with Phi, but uh unfortunately punted my draft 03 just it was awful uh that's you know part of the issue there like i mentioned i live in a very uh a uh, very lonely area. Don't don't have uh, many people to play with, much less seven other people to get a draft together with. Mm-hmm. So that really hurt me because in Lille, I at least had a test house. We jammed and, you know, that week of practice really kicked in. But then, you know, being out of it for like a month plus uh, and literally not playing a single draft until Nats itself. Yeah, that was that was rough. Uh, sure. But that was it. And- that was my lapse of Leviah play, which... I'd say it was, you know, decent top eight, ninth, four oh at Nats. That means in total I only lost two games across three <sighs> tournaments with Phi. That's pretty cool. Or did That's... I say three or two? Two games. Two games. Pretty nuts. <laughs> Which is like pretty incredible. And yeah. you know, I it isn't I I do understand the the frustrations with draft. And I think a lot of people have some frustrations with uprising draft regardless. Uh even if even if you do have people to play with, but like it is so much harder when you don't have the reps in and uh, hopefully uh, it looks like Talishar is doing something with a uh, draft now. So we'll see if that yeah. is uh, as clean as, um, as we'd hope. But so you technically you qualify for day two of nationals, but you chose mm-hmm. not to do day two. Oh, of hell nationals. no. <laughs> yeah. So I, we saw, like- <laughs> Look, the thing about it was like you go oh three, that's the start of your day. That's worst tiebreakers possible. So mm-hmm. regardless of the four four oh run after that, I mean I just didn't first of all, I didn't really enjoy playing Phi. I was just doing it to try to do well. So I was already out of real contention. So yeah, we switched back over to our girl, our queen, our uh for the calling, which was I think larger than Nats anyway. So um yeah, that's like yeah. almost five hundred players. It was nuts. Yeah, it was it was pretty incredible. I remember coming over to you after the end of the day. You said I went four zero on on Phi, and I o three the draft. And you were you're you know you were a little upset, and you're like, I think I'm 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 gonna do Leviah tomorrow. I'm like, awesome. I was like, mm-hmm. I went two and two with Leviah in in nationals, and uh, mm-hmm. 
one and two. And you're like, and you said something to me, which <laughs> really resonated. You said, uh, it feels weird that I had no fun going four and O oh with Phi, but I've had the best time of my life going O oh four with Leviah. And I was like, <laughs> you know what? It's like, it's kind of true. I mean, O oh four is, is, is probably there for uh, well, exaggeration. I was yeah, I was. Yeah, original you were time, like, but it's close to a true statement. Yes. <laughs> it is close enough. But so, yeah, we, we saw you return to her for the calling. Um, how did that go? Oh, that calling was fantastic. I think that is the most lively flesh and blood event I've ever been a part of, mostly because Fino was rocking the top tables and he is just a masterpiece <laughs> to behold. He is just loud and uh, as emotive as a conductor. It's like, it's incredible. He's he's really cool <laughs> to be around. And I was hanging around the top tables the entire time. So uh, yeah, really, it felt great. Uh, it was a strange run, though, because I locked in this, you know, mid-range, like, recursion Levia idea being, let's try to get into old him bracket and just wipe it. That was, it was really built to target old him. And it was not built to face rune blades. Uh, but mm -hmm. somehow out of the uh, 12 rounds played, it was a long event, by the way, it was a long event. Out of the 12 rounds played, I faced five viscerai, And oh. somehow I only lost to one of them, wow. which is incredible because i mentally checked out every time i saw the viscera i'm like okay and it's a loss okay and it's a loss and uh somehow nope only one was a loss uh i ended up in total eight and four which was good enough for top 32 but i did bubble out to 41st place so i missed out on the money which was pretty unfortunate because i actually had pretty decent tiebreakers like i'd lost the second to last round and maybe like the ninth round or something so i thought i was going to mm. be in top 32 but i didn't i didn't um but that run entirely was just a blast like it just it was just fun it was being on levia being actually around the top tables playing some incredible people uh and i would hope gaining some respect for levia as well because when that build has you know its targets on old him and finds the matchup like you're playing with your food it it you know they they do have to respect the fact that the deck is good at doing what it's supposed to do. The Viscerai games, a little bit of luck. You yeah. know, Viscerai's <laughs> got to break a little bit. You got to find your blood rush. You know, those those are just variance matchups. But when the games play out and they're long and they're grindy and you get your recursion set up, mm, it's so good. It's what the Vi is supposed to do. Just howl loops. Oh, delicious. Yeah, it's it's kind of funny. Now, to, to kind of also talk a little bit about Viscerai matchups, you... Uh, are in oh, the yeah. Goliath Gauntlet. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the as of we're recording, you've 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 played one match um, that we know of uh, in the Goliath Gauntlet, and you got paired up against Pablo Pintor round one. Now I will say, I was I was fortunate enough to be on the Combat Chains uh, bracket breakpoint uh, where we we just sat around we we basically did like a sports show talking about this this bracket. I was the only one who took you in the first round. Yes. Just so you know, Ethan. I was I, like, I got a good feeling about what's going on here. Maybe I, you know, maybe maybe I just saw the way you were tweeting. He's like, he's he's too happy not to be um, <laughs> uh, winning that matchup. Um, and uh, you won. And, and it was awesome. And I think it was kind of cool. And, and this is, goes to something you said about people respecting Leviah. When you did that... I, I saw tweets like yeah. I think I, I'm, I'm probably quoting exactly a tweet that said Leviah low key scary. I think was yeah, someone yeah, yeah. said that, that, that. <laughs> which was like so cool. Now, how do you feel about being in the Goliath Gauntlet? How do you feel after it's round one? How do you feel about the rest of the tournament? Yeah, well, actually, um, the Goliath Gauntlet is just that is just one of the coolest initiatives in the community um they they're ahead of the curve here they got they got out ahead of our clash event so dang it we couldn't <laughs> we couldn't say we were the first to do like an invitational but uh yeah it's really cool i think you know the lore behind the goliath gauntlet i'm pretty sure i was like the 17th pick and someone just backed out and they're like okay let's get this guy because he's recognizable um because it's really not content creator heavy it, it's supposed to be the 16 top players in the world which i'm definitely not on that list by player quality, player skill, like finishes. I just, I really shouldn't be on that list, but I think they, you know, they, they peppered in a couple 
content creators and I'm thankful to be one of them. Um, and uh, yeah, when I got paired against Pablo, it was just it was quaking in my boots. I love Pablo. Hung out with him now at both Pro Tours. Really friendly guy. Uh, and I'm absolutely terrified of the amount of skill he has uh, in this game. It is incredible. And I know he's a Viscerai fan. And even worse than that, he was toying with me. All these streams, he'd be hanging out in chat. Like, <laughs> oh, I'm playing a Runeblade, but I wonder which one. I'm like, you dog, I know it's Viscerai, okay? Like, like I'm going to instant tilt. Like, you don't have to say anything else. Um, but we ended up finally get playing our game. And it was insane. Because if you actually break down, like, turn, well, actually, I did a breakdown on my stream. You can catch, like, the full VOD review of my point of view that game was not only insanely lucky because of the beast within discards but it mm -hmm. was actually so lucky to the point where like poor pablo could not have done anything different and when you start to pick apart a game like that that's when you can start saying dang levia really is scary because pablo did everything <laughs> perfect perfect yeah. and you know the way he slows down try to threaten rune chant rosetta when i'm like at husk range uh, you know, he plays the tempo correctly. He does everything right. But Leviah, when she pops off, when you somehow hit double beast within discard and just unlock these insane, like 21 damage turns that aren't even like, they don't even use blood rush. <laughs> yeah, she can look pretty good. Uh, and to be fair, that version of the deck is really aggressive. Like just, it takes a full hand and throws like 20 plus. That's all it's trying to do. And it wor it worked. You know, if I had crashed and burned, no one would have believed it, that the yeah. deck could do it. But when you start to watch the game and you realize, holy shit, he just like, he played like a pulping and then like roused in the middle of the combat chain and then ended like graveling. Like, what is that? No, you're supposed to start the turn with rouse. But no, Levi can do some sneaky things. Uh, it was a great, great game. And you're right. As of now, I'm still in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah it's it's it, to be honest it is it, it truly is a very uh tough field and I, I don't think you give yourself enough credit because i know that there are quite a few content creators but yeah i you know i think it's worth noting you hold your own in in professional level tournaments all the time it's not like you're some schlub all right ethan you're you're pretty good okay okay game. well then where's my win where's my win huh <laughs> like i gotta we gotta we'll all get, help okay listen get we'll get there. there we'll get there but no it, it was it was ton, a ton of fun to watch it was a ton of fun to see you know obviously pablo's incredible there's nothing taken away from him but you know it it goes to show that you know something like levi can really do it and it was fun to fun to watch now mm -hmm. Before we talk about Clash, I just want to—I want to talk about the unfortunate luggage issue. If you wanted to touch on it, because mm -hmm. um, after Lille, for those of you who don't know, Ethan, well, you didn't lose it. The airline or or whoever lost a oh, lot it's of more your than that. luggage. There's multiple steps to it. <laughs> oh man! Well, can, take us through the saga because I was following it on Twitter and I was like, this sounds like the biggest nightmare of my life. Yeah. Um, well, I ran about it way too often, so we'll boil it down to <laughs> the just most unfortunate events in a row that happened, because that's literally what the story is. Basically, basically, um, going to France, I was part of a test house that needed test decks to be brought. They wanted like streaming gear because they wanted to make some content out of it, yada yada, and they enlisted me to do all of it because I was already going to be checking a bag for the streaming gear, so I might as well throw in all these test decks and just load up this check bag with everything and i normally mm -hmm. never never travel that way i travel super light like a backpack and that's it but because they needed all this it might as well have been me to just bring everything everything because you know saves money i'm the only one checking the bag so it was cool it was cool at first no big problem i check my bag all the way into france it gets there and i actually lug it all the way from the airport onto the bus to lille 30 minutes walking from lille to the airbnb uh, it, you know, it was already a huge hassle to have this check bag, but whatever. Then we go through the entire week and unfortunately I don't even get to use any of the streaming gear because the Wi-Fi is so bad. And then we have to move places because of bed bugs and just everything started to fall apart. So it's honestly some bad omens already, but it's okay because you know what else you pick up at a pro tour like this is a bunch of swag. So <laughs> I start then packing this bag with everything like the emperor playmat. Uh, you know, signed all like the Pro Tour Leal playmat. Uh, you know, like my Doomsday playmat signed by all the League of Levi people that I meet. Um, just 
everything, everything, my trade binder, it becomes absolutely swole, <laughs> like full <laughs> of, full of my things. Um, and when I'm departing France, I go ahead, check it. You know, there's a lock on it. I don't, what I forgot to do was get like one of those tiles or like Apple air tags, you know, that part I didn't do. Uh, but I checked it in. It, it seemed fine. I board my flight. I have a long layover. So to me, I thought there wouldn't be any chance that it would get lost in that flight, in that uh, plane change. Um, and then I show up in New York and somehow my bag's not there. I'm like, okay, well, this is awful because it really has everything in it. Like it really does. Mm -hmm. And so I tell the front desk and I fill out the forms and they say, don't worry, you know, less than 5% of bags that are delayed actually go missing. Like, we'll let you know when you find it, blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to edge my seat for like three days. And then finally they tell me, we did get it. And we're going to ship it to you. And to me, I'm like, okay. I mean, that's that's fine. Proceed. They go ahead and ship it with FedEx. And FedEx has it for about a week, which is already a long time. You know, you'd think it would just get to me in a week. Mm -hmm. They have it for about a week. And then it gets stuck at a distribution center. And I've got the tracking number and I can see where it is. And it's just like so puzzling. Like, well, why isn't it moving? So I give them a call and they're like, oh, oh sorry. You know, we'll, we'll nudge our drivers. We'll nudge the distribution center. Don't worry about it. We'll give you an update. Two days pass. I call again because they don't contact me and they say, oh, sorry about that. Yeah, yeah. We'll give you an update. We, we didn't actually like get a response yet. They call me back like the next day or so. And they say, oh, okay. Yeah. You know, we've made a little bit of progress. You know, just need, you need to be patient. And I'm getting worried because now it's been a lot of back and forth. We're already looking at like two weeks removed from the trip. And where's my bag? Like you have the tracking number. How can it be gone? Uh, well, after another month, like legitimate month of pushing now from August 30th, we're into like the first weeks of October. It's crazy. And I finally get them to admit, finally get FedEx to admit that it's lost because they've been delaying, delaying. They don't want to make the claim. They've mm. just been saying, oh, we'll find it. We'll find it. But finally, I got to someone in the chain of command who legitimately could tell me, look, we did make an effort. We called the driver, we called distribution. It's gone. Go ahead, proceed with claim paperwork, and you know we'll work with you. So now it's been about a week and a half of battling to actually get the claim acknowledged because I itemized the list, and it's like almost 6K in stuff. It's, oh, and yeah. that's, that's like on the low end because I don't really know how to value like the draft cards from Leo that were LSS stamped. Like, what do you put on that? I have no idea. So I just didn't even count them. I guess, I, I don't know. There were no Majestics in there. I probably should have given them a price tag, but whatever. So there was like a lot of things that fell through the cracks. But from what was like legitimately itemized, it was about 6K. Uh, and of course, they don't want to pay that. They do not want to pay that. So it's been a huge back and forth of them now fighting for like affidavits, receipts for people to confirm how much money some of this stuff is because it's not easy. These aren't Amazon items, you know? Like I don't get mm -hmm. to show them Yes, here's my purchase receipt of the Leal playmat. Here's my purchase receipt of like a year's worth of cold foil heroes in my trade binder. Like that's just not, that's not how it works. Yeah. So uh, yeah, it's awful. It's been awful. I really doubt they are going to pay out the full claim. They're going to fight it tooth and nail. Uh, luckily, my grandfather is a retired lawyer and he's been helping me uh, with just a lot of the legal knowledge in case we need to move forward with a like small claim suit or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, but the one lucky part here is that FedEx lost it. If the airline had lost it and not found it, they're protected by international travel law or whatever, which only oh makes them pay out like 1.5 thousand if a, something like this happens max. So we actually are lucky in a way that it hit U.S. soil and FedEx lost it because now there is precedent to get back the full value of those items and potentially damages and reparations because here's the other thing, Tommy, I'm not sure you knew this. I actually will be streaming every single SEG con from here on out. Uh, I get to travel around with my rig, which I'm replacing currently, uh, <laughs> and actually bring battle-hardened coverage to the Flesh and Blood community. I know it's crazy. I don't no. know. SEG con just like doesn't do it, but it's going to be me. It's going to be me. And I had to miss SEG con Dallas because I didn't replace anything yet because this was still at the point where they hadn't confirmed it was lost, lost. So I didn't want to just like dump money in case it magically appeared. But now that it's lost, lost, yes, I've started to replace things. And I will be there at, you know, Philly, for example, SG Con Philly coming up. And we'll actually bring amazing coverage to it. So <laughs> we're bouncing back. We're bouncing back. But my God, it's been like a month and a half now of just nightmare scenarios. Yeah. Well, you know, first of all, it's awesome 
that you are doing coverage for the SCG cons and it's very much needed and uh, it'll be very exciting and um, but, but I do feel for you and I, I hope the listeners also feel for you because, you know, it sucks. And I, you know, we talked before the podcast that some of this stuff is like irreplaceable, right? It's stuff that was signed mm-hmm. by, you know, for folks for, you know, all over. I think that you mentioned the doomsday play mat, which you mm-hmm. had folks sign. I think I signed it in New Jersey, um, oh, yeah. which, um, I'll sign another one if you want, just so you know, <laughs> I got to um, replace the doomsday mat itself. That thing went up in price. <laughs> Oh yeah. Well, maybe somebody has one that, um, that they're willing to throw at you, but, um, you know, it, it sucks. So, you know, I, I, I urge the listeners to, uh, take at least some empathy and then, cause that's, it's the worst. And, um, you know, I, I hate to see it to you, but I hope that there's a silver lining in, in, uh, some in there somewhere, uh, though I'm sure right now it does not feel like you could find it, but one thing that has come from, you know, the wake of all that is clash and mm-hmm. uh, it's very exciting. We, you mentioned at the beginning of the show, you're going to be doing a, a invitational much like the Goliath gauntlet for clash, a new format. Uh, you, you mentioned that the idea for clash kind of came out of a team covenant, you know, conversation. Mm-hmm. I want to know what the core theme or maybe even the elevator pitch for clash is. Mm-hmm. Oh, easy. All right, so you're approaching this game flesh and blood, right? And someone tells you, look, their most competitive format, classic constructed, you get your hero with kitted out with all their legendaries, their expensive cards. It's that full buy-in trading card game experience that you can find in like any other big name, Yu-Gi-Oh, Magic, whatever. Uh, and, you know, that comes with a price tag. It comes with a level of like competitiveness uh, and game knowledge that can be pretty intimidating. But if you want to scale that down a bit, currently the only option is really Blitz. But Blitz has all those same problems and a little bit more because the games can be shorter and they can sometimes have windows for just more variants. So what is Clash? Clash is just the better way to pitch a scaled down version of Classic Constructive, in my opinion. And we're going to find this out in our tournament series. But when you look at a hero's identity, what's that come from? It comes from their signature weapon because it's even tied to them on the Living Legend page. It comes from their hero specializations. It's what makes one Guardian different from the next. And in Clash, any rarity of weapon and hero spec and mentor, to be fair, is allowed. And that all, whereas everything else in the deck needs to be commons and rares. So what that does is the rest of the fluff of a deck is toned way down. Still, mm. still deeper than commoner. There's a lot to do in the you know, rares being added to that pool. But the hero identity is completely protected and kind of becomes a bit of the core of your then deck. You know, if I'm Bolton, I'm going all in on my Lumina Raiden turns being the best my deck can do. And that feels awesome. I love it. Yeah. And when you start building Clash decks and playing them, um, I think, yeah, the, the, the thematics of, the, of these young heroes are just so perfectly preserved. And yet the gameplay is still amazing. And the deck building is still very deep. And even with a bit of sideboarding added, there aren't as many just auto-loss matchups like you might find if your one deck strategy just doesn't line up well with another one in Blitz. Uh, I I love it. And from the few games I've played so far, I'm just even more excited now because Dynasty has an extra layer of, look at all these majestic weapons coming. You know Mm -hmm. what that's actually really good for? Because maybe Rock isn't quite it for Blitz or CC. But hey, in Clash, like... The Majestics in those slots are powerful. Like a rock deck can really make it work maybe. in Like that's just so exciting. There's more to be excited about with every release now. Um, And I think this Clash tournament that we're going to debut right after Worlds uh, will hopefully build a lot of hype for it. Dynasty is going to be live. I want to see everyone's deck building juices flowing. Get all that creativity going. Um, I think it's great. I've heard a lot of feedback from people playing at their local stores already. I've seen some people ask for it on Talishar. I try to always jump in those games. Uh, and it's been nothing but positive, like truly. So it's great. It's And thank you for being a part of it. You were in that chat kind of ironing out some of the rules, and I love how it launched, really. Yeah, well, I, I do want to say I'm honored to for you to think of me, first of all, to even you know be a part of it. And it was I was so stoked as soon as you said it because I had – and I enjoy Commoner, right? Commoner's fun. You know, it has its place. 
Um, I don't particularly love Blitz. I love CC with all my heart. Mm -hmm. And uh, I do remember last year, some, some like in the lull of the December of like Flesh and Blood not really having a lot going on, my armory would do uh, the commons and rares Mm -hmm. kind of format it wasn't like a real format but we we just like oh commons rares that's what's allowed and that felt so much more fun to me than than something like commoner and then you announced this and i was like oh this is so sweet and uh, you know that i when we kind of ironed out like oh well specialization should be allowed and then i'm like oh doomsday sounds pretty cool mm -hmm. in, in this format <laughs> um it's it sounds awesome now we, there are some bannings here, like some 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 things that are banned. Anything in like commoner, right? And and then right. obviously some obvious ones like uh, Duskblade. Duskblade the and name one, yeah. drone. Um, yes, and uh, drones. Yep. Do you anticipate any further bannings or, or even unbannings? Uh, no. There's definitely cards people have already pointed out as potentially problematic from the limited play that's been done with the format. But I really want our debut tournament series. Uh, to show us the holes in the format because it, it can't be perfect right out the gate. If it is, mm -hmm. amazing. Um, but we have some really incredible players. We have some really um, you know, inventive players at the table here, and we're doing a double elimination bracket. And that's going to show us uh, you know, what a deck can really do. You know, Maybe you just get that one unlucky run, but in double elim, you'll get your chance to once again make it on the, you know, the future table and show what your deck is capable of. And with that extra layer of games that we're collecting, I think that will show us what is more problematic. There won't just be these one game samples. Uh, we'll see everyone play multiple times and uh, maybe we as a community can decide things at that point. It doesn't just need to be us. We just need to be the ones that launch it with some kind of core rule set. Um, but then at that point, make it to where people legitimately want to play it. So I don't want to just, you know, be the only one toting around mm -hmm. with the band hammer. I want, feedback as well so as of now we're locking it with commoner plus duskblade and drone it was just kind of an easy route into it and i do like a lot of the commoner bands regardless so it was an easy place yeah. to start and i you know i do really love the inclusion of the majestic weapons and i'm not to spoil it for anyone but i am going to try to make hexagore work in this format yes. and you might even see hexagore uh make an appearance in uh the the tournament but also now we have as you mentioned before rock you've been playing around with the rock <laughs> on on stream a little bit uh you seem to be doing well from what i've seen uh, yeah. what are your initial thoughts on on this this crazy crazy brute weapon and for those who don't know i should say it's two-handed uh brute weapon rock seven attack uh, it costs three to activate, and you cannot have any um, cards left in hand, which makes yes. it a really tough challenge currently. Yeah, meaning you can't actually, your last card can't be the pitch card. You need to mm -hmm. activate and then pitch, which which means rock does not function with a one card hand. If it did, that'd be insane, but that's kind of the initial puzzle to how to make it work. And I think I may be the most qualified player to talk about rock right now, you know, low key, just four Oh, undefeated on rock. Yeah. On stream, you can watch the games. Uh, but what I found about this weapon is first of all, it is really, it is really strong. Like seven attack, just sticky on the board as something you could potentially access. And funny enough, some of the ways you access it are on zero card hands. Like it kind of just is one of the ways you can build for it with like a tunic and an energy potion, zero card return seven feel pretty insane. What was interesting about taking Rock and trying to build a whole deck around it is that it is definitely not the normal Reinar decks that you've seen. The cost sure. curve is very different. Uh, one of the best things you can do in the Rock deck so far is start with a one cost, float two by pitching a blue, and then use either Amulet uh, of Ignition? Is, it, is that what it's called? Amulet of Ignition, the one that it's a yellow, reduces the cost of your next activated by one? Yes. Something like yeah, that, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then either that or Tunic to make your rock playable from the two floating after the one cost. So stuff like Brandish, stuff like Rolling Thunder, stuff like Life for Life, those are great leads into then a rock swing. And it's a really weird shell to build around Reinar because those aren't sixes. You definitely need to add more blues than normal because that's the pitch base. Uh, so it's new. It's really fresh. I like it a lot. Really, really do. 
uh, and A went 4-0 with it, so it can't be <laughs> unplayable because this yeah. is out. This is without any of the new shell of brute cards. Which, if my spoiler gives you any indication, they'll be pretty spicy. They'll be uh, pretty solid. Yeah, yeah, can't be too upset. I, with them. I certainly hope so. You know, there and like you said, there's like tons of crazy ways you can activate Rog right now, and and you know you could go through all of them. But you know, plenty plenty of people have posted that list. You could find it somewhere, and it's mm-hmm. really cool. And you, I mean. The, the tunic is probably the best way to do it right now. Um, mm-hmm. But do you anticipate anything in Dynasty? You know, maybe your spoiler to like support Rock's activation? Because we saw with some of the other spoilers, like the Guardian shield, they spoiled a card mm-hmm. that would re- remove the negative one counters from the shields. Uh, are we going to get something uh, along that line? Well, I'd like to keep it ambiguous with like no comment, but uh, I'll be clear. Mine at least does not interact okay. with rock. Uh, so I can't, uh, it's not like I'm holding cards on the table here. I, the way I was playing rock was just, it, it, as of now, it is the probably best way to play it. I don't know. Um, I I would hope that more of that one cost curve that buffs weapons would be in brute's future. Uh, it is sure. something sorely lacking, even for the likes of like hexagore where you're just missing the one cost weapon buff that would also turn off blood deck. God, it'd be so nice. <laughs> Will we ever get that? I guess they don't want to give us that. Unworldly mm. could have done it, but whatever, whatever. Um, yeah, so just more brute cards in that vein, because buffing weapons is a brute mechanic we've already seen tons of times. Rolling Thunder, Barraging Beatdown, um, Primeval Bellow, Blood Rush Bellow. It's part of brute. And Rolling Thunder is definitely the best next to rock as of now. There could definitely be more. I, I fully expect, if not Dynasty, Savage Lands, why not? Yeah, well, I, I hope you're right. Now, <clears throat> we're going to get into some listener questions here, Ethan, if you are game. Sure. Um, I got quite a few people who need their questions answered. And the first one comes from Darth Prentice, a.k.a. Greg, our producer. And he wanted me to do it in this um, kind of... I got to get oh, you got to shout it from the rooftops? I got to shout it. Ethan... <laughs> Will there be Shadow Brute support in Dynasty? Uh, if you mean Shadow Brute card specifically, that is still an unknown. I am hopeful because Royal is kind of a talent. I, I don't know if it's technically like sub talent or talent, or some Something additive like talent. Um, but it is it is a talent ish, and if they're going to add some of that, why not sprinkle in a bit more Shadow Light? you know, ice, earth. I mean, honestly, they could pass on those. I, I'd be okay with it. But Shadow and Light yeah. for sure. Um, why not just a couple? A couple. It, it does. It's a supplemental set, so it doesn't need to be a, a mountain of support. It can just be an extra one or two. And and I would Ooh. love it. What I really don't expect, though, is Shadow Brute specifically, and even any of those mm-hmm. hybridized types of cards, like Light Warrior for one, or like Draconic Illusionist. I really feel like those cards are core to the hero they were released with and Mm -hmm. won't really get an extra wave of support until a new hero comes to replace a living legend version of that hero i just as of now that's pretty much how it's gone there's some things that break precedent like stalagmite came out which was an ice guardian card so or elemental guardian card so that did come out after old set. whatever it's not a perfect theory but that is my overall theory um and for that, no, I don't think Dynasty will really show Shadow Brute specific support, but hold out hope because confirmed at least one card is good for Leviah because I have it in hand. There you go. <laughs> oh, man. Well, I wish I knew what it was. But as from Go Again Gaming, we all love as, and I think uh, he is going to be taking place or ter- participating in, yes. in the tournament of the Clash, which I bet he's bringing Azalea. If you could design a fair card for Levi, what would it say and do? All right. Well, fair, I would take to mean low variance because the variance cards are the most unfun part of Levi for both you and your opponent. Uh, mm-hmm. If they don't hit on your end, you feel like you probably just shouldn't have shown up that day. If they do hit for your opponent, then they feel like they had no agency. So sure. fair would mean no dice rolling, no random discard. And what that means is it probably would end up being a recursion piece because that is a very fair part of Leviah's kit that is kind of two step to set up. You've got to get it out of your deck for one. And then you also need to control your graveyard, which is a whole other like mini game that Leviah plays to really make good use out of it. And there is a 
card, like a cost curve card for Levi that has been missing for a long time. And that has been a one cost non-attack action with go again that's playable from the Banish Zone. Uh, I wouldn't like it to be as vanilla of a buff as like Hal from Beyond. You know, Hal from Beyond, same deal, gives plus mm-hmm. three as a red for two. If you scale it down to just a one cost, um, it would most likely not really fit in that curve of giving a buff, because how would you scale it three to one unless it was like a majestic? But it could have some sideways type of effect. I've toyed on Twitter with this idea that um, a little bit of graveyard manipulation for your opponent would be interesting. Deadwood Rumbler already plays that game. Invert Existence was a card Chain had that could play that game. So Leviah getting a bit more of that could be interesting. Um, you can check my Twitter for a couple versions of like this specific card uh, called like Shadowy Depths or something that I was toying around with. But <laughs> like that idea of a one cost non attack recursion playable that needs to happen for Leviah's mid range recursion playstyle to really really come home. And main issue being it's all these two costs that she has right now that just don't have that extra pairing, that little, you know, their perfect um, side order, right, of just this one cost that works so perfectly next to a blue. That's what's missing. Bring that bring that to me and Leviah will feel so, so, so good. So um, I hope that's a great answer. Hopeful. Um, Mara from the Blackwing Studio, who we will be seeing this weekend yes. in Columbus. How do you balance playing a deck you love versus a deck that gets results? What are your considerations when choosing a deck for a major event? And how do how much do things like comfort and enjoyment versus win rate or metagame positions factor into the decision? Oh well, I'm not the right person to answer this question because <laughs> how do I balance it? Well, I balance it by playing Leviathan so much that even on some horrible runs, there will be the good ones. And that's just so far worked <laughs> okay. It's been, uh, you know, like I said, I haven't gotten that big win yet. That hasn't happened. We've won like smaller events, skirmish, RTN, ProQuest, whatever. But that mid-tier event, even like a battle hardened, I got pretty close second at that SCG Con one um, on Leviathan of all things. That's probably my biggest like Leviathan finish, I guess. Um, but to actually take home first would really take not just this assumption of, okay, I want to play Leviah, but to look more at, okay, the archetypes of Leviah. There's the control Leviah, there's the mid-range Leviah, there's the aggro Leviah, and actually hone in on which one is best for the specific metagame I'm walking into, and not just going with my gut. Because I go with my gut a lot with Leviah, but I was completely woken up to the fact that like full aggro Leviah, for example, is really strong again. It was a deck I completely stopped playing when Chain and Starvo were around, because the amount of um, Mm non-blocks with Pulping and Wild Ride just don't let you actually play into those decks the way you had to. There are a lot of hit effects coming from Starvo. They weren't a good enough rate to actually let you race Chain. They just ended up being these reds that could brick you, and if you brick, you lose that matchup. But Vasily's Kyrlis got top four at the Greek Nationals with full aggro Levi again. And while the premise of the deck is old, he breathed new life into working on it because i'd stopped looking into that deck and unfortunately when i stopped looking into a version of Leviah, a lot of other potential people also stopped they they trust me a, a bit too much i think uh i'm only one person i can't test everything and i'm really happy that vasily went back and looked at this because he was absolutely right full aggro Leviah right now wonderful wonderful deck so now it's back in back on the table when i'm looking at this next event like worlds which Leviah do i want to choose it's a very, very real contender. It's the version I brought to the Goliath Gauntlet. Already brought me some success there. So that's now the first consideration. I'm always going to take the deck I love, but I will try to choose the version of it that's got the best metagame ahead of it. Um, but uh, after that Phi stint, no, it's just Levi from here on out. <laughs> like truly, Phi just brought me no joy. And joy, joy is important. You play long events, you need to not only just feel relieved after a win, you need to have had some fun. Yeah. Right? I agree. And even after a loss, you can't just feel awful. You need to also have had glimmers of hope. Mm-hmm. And when you play a deck you just don't really enjoy, you don't get those little pepperings of other emotions. It's just, okay, good, I got the win. That's what I'm here for. Or, God, I lost. It's because of the matchup, blah, blah, blah. Like, no. 
yeah. play the deck you love. It, it brings a whole lot of more depth to the the way you can go walk your way through an event. Yeah. I couldn't agree more, and I appreciate that answer quite a bit. Now, our buddy, uh, who I know hangs out in, in your Discord and as well as mine, uh, Sigma or Das, asks, "Do you want to continue? Oh, jeez, let me take that one again. Do you want to continue pursuing pro play, and would you accept a team spot if one was offered to you? Because if you accept a team spot, sometimes those decisions, like playing the deck that you have fun with, you know, get a little bit dicey." Hmm. Yeah, well, technically, I'm already on a team, but it's a community-oriented team. The Tavern Brawlers, mm-hmm. shout out. They run great events on their Discord. Um, but I think we're maybe making our mark as a more competitive team. Brian Lorenz made top four at Nationals, for one. He's on the team. Um, and between us, uh, yeah, I mean, that's like some really good talent. There's also a lot of other good players in there. Everyone's just waiting for their moment, right? But in mm-hmm. terms of looking at one of the other really big teams like if it was team dragon shield or i guess um i can't really name it oh team ascent there you go that's another yeah. one um and then i'll say etc you know all the other ones out there <laughs> um i actually really think going in on a team that has the right framework to really be a pro team is something i'd be interested in i wouldn't want to shape myself to fit in in any other way but i'd love to see the behind the scenes of What's going on to really push these players to question every single card choice in their deck? Like, what's it look like? Is it an open table discussion? Is it just data? Uh, is it just gut feeling? Like, you know, because I I make a lot of executive decisions, let's say, about Leviathan cards. Um, mm-hmm. And sometimes there's not as much pushback as I'd like. Sometimes there's a lot. And I feel like a pro team is kind of just all that in one, where it's just this close-minded or not close-minded close-knit amount of people who are constantly pushing back and forth against each other so i would like to experience that but i wouldn't want to do it if it sacrificed my ability to play levi and we've already seen like josh lau right he's on the card guys card guys that's a competitive team and he just pretty much only plays bolton and they let him do it and i think bolton is not very good and i also think it's very unfun to play against because all he plays is the Sabres version, but you know, whatever. Um, yeah, so I, I guess it's possible. There, man. <laughs> yeah, well, the Raiden will come. Raiden will come. I hope. <laughs> yeah. I hope. Uh, um, so it's kind of a half yes, a half yes, I guess. All right. All right. Uh, Andromeda says or asks, do you think they're afraid of making Brute too powerful? And that's why the support seems lacking sometimes. And uh, how do we balance Brute going forward if that's the case? Oh, yeah. Um, actually, today was a great, great stream on Team Covenant. If They were testing nothing but Brute and Blitz. And you could really see a bit of why Brute gets curved the way it does. Um, there is a lot of non-interaction with Reinar in particular. It's, it's crazy to call Reinar like a problem hero, but he's the one that's really making Brute, I think get a little bit uh, a little bit hurt with the power of their card releases here because he has so much potential behind him to just have non-games. Mm-hmm. Intimidate is a very crazy mechanic. It's so strong. And metagame-wise, it's actually quite good right now as well. And if Reinar became too consistent, then you'd actually have a non-interactable type of deck that just said, I literally don't care what you do. My hand takes away your hand and deals so much damage that you're dead in three turns. Uh, which can already happen in Blitz. You see that in Blitz already. But Reinar still isn't the most consistent deck to, to actually pull that off in CC. CC is like a bit too much life. You have to start drawing like too many good hands back to back, which just is not super likely for how Brute's built right now. Um, so yeah, they they definitely, they hit us with some other sideways things to balance the class out. I don't love that randomness and non-blocks are, sure. or, or rather I should say dice rolling because that's what Everfest showed us. I don't like dice rolling and non-blocks being how they do that. I really like the draw discard mechanic because it is it is a halfway point between Reinar and Leviah, where Leviah can use it to fill graveyard. Reinar can use it to maybe trigger Intimidate. Um, and more cards that feed both would be really nice. But red non-blocks in particular, really tough because Leviah doesn't get to use those for everything that they could potentially do because Mm -hmm. she always needs to turn off blood debt. So when you start drawing these all red hands, 
it's probably not the card you can really play anymore because you need to use it to turn off your blood debt first and foremost, but then they're kind of stuck in this red slot with Wild Ride and Pulping and Bear Fangs being only six in that red slot. It's a little frustrating. It's a little frustrating. So I'd love to see more of those in other colors. (laughs) That'd be really nice. I would like that a lot. (laughs) I I Uh, agree. And one thing I do want to like point out or, or, you know, kind of at least touch on is to me, rock as, as, as memey as it is, as crazy as that card is, it is presenting this new, I, I hope new idea of like figuring out puzzles to get power in brute as opposed to just RNG, which is kind of mm-hmm. cool. And I'm hoping that we get a little bit more of that. Now, oh, yeah. Capolo asks, since you so famously have such a great stint as young Levia in the cosplay world, if you want to cosplay something that is not her, what would it be? All right, short answer on this one. Uh, just stay tuned for some pictures coming from the Columbus uh, right. Battle Harden this weekend. How about that? <laughs> and to follow that question up, Caleb from the Discord asks, how do you get them curls, man? How do you do that? Oh, oh that's good. A, a good one, Caleb. It's a bit of a puzzle myself. Sometimes I wake <laughs> up and I'm having a good day. Sometimes I wake up and I do everything I can and it's still a bad day. Uh, and sometimes all I do is like a little spritz of water, some leave-in conditioner, and they look great. And sometimes it's like a shower that doesn't work into another shower that probably made it worse into, <laughs> you know, my girlfriend screaming at me that it's because the water's too hot. And that's what, like, it's just, it's a mess. Like, you think I haven't answered all this? No, sometimes, <laughs> yeah, sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. No, yeah. well, I, I will say Lady Fresh has similar curls to you and, and she has the same issues with uh, <laughs> the <laughs> the good days and Whoa, the bad days. Lady Fresh and Woman Sand? Is there going to be a collab this weekend? Oh, my God. Well, she won't be in Columbus. But, oh, she won't be there? Okay, Woman Sand will be there. Um, One day. Uh, thank you so much, Ethan. You're the absolute best. I, I truly mean it. I, I love chatting with you. I love, you know, talking shop about Leviathan and, and, and just the game in general. Um, I want you to please plug all of your things and thank you. Well, thank you right back. Uh, this community is the gift that keeps on giving. Uh, it's not just the legal of Aya that are out there. You guys are great, but the, the fresh and buds crew, very, very cool. Very, very cool. So, uh, what's my things? Let's see. There's the YouTube. And while the videos are a bit slower because I just don't have anything to my name still, I do stream a lot. And I would love for anyone to come check that out. Uh, it's very lively. It put a lot of work into the just energy I bring and the overlays and the chat interaction. It feels like we've got it to a good spot. So I like that a lot. I've got a Twitter, Mansant Fab. Uh, I've got, I mean, there's like a Patreon that will unlock things like the Talishar sleeves, which is pretty cool. And then I did just reorder a whole batch of the actual Dragon Shield custom sleeves. Hopefully have them in time for Worlds, but uh, maybe not. Shipping might be a bit slow. But if you really want to support me and support the travel that needs to be funded so I can actually go to SEG cons, bring coverage, uh, bring commentary, and just do the best that I can for this community because that's what you all deserve. Yes, Patreon would be amazing and merchandise when I've got that restocked. Uh, but, uh, But, you know, hanging out in stream, that'll do it too. Just being part of the community. Yeah, and what what days do you stream typically? That is Monday, 1 to 4. Uh, Tuesday, 8 to 11. Wednesday, 1 to 4. Thursday, 8 to 11, Eastern Time. And that's so all we kinda yeah, flip Eastern block. Time. This, yeah, this Eastern podcast time. will be coming out at noon on Thursday, so you'll be able to catch them tonight uh, if, oh, if, yes. you, if you'd like. And uh, please, please go support Ethan. He's just the best. Um, you guys can all can continue to find me on Twitter at fresh buds pod. Please like comment, subscribe on the YouTube. If you listen there, we also have the bud rush bellow live stream there, uh, which is a ton of fun. Me and Gary have, you know, just some crazy antics, uh, join the buds discord. It's free to join and also check out the Patreon too. As I mentioned up at the top of the show. Now, Ethan, I always like to talk, End the show talking a little bit about food. What's some really good food that you're enjoying lately? Well, I had a a little cookout party, like a potluck with my friends, and I made some Louisiana-style barbecue shrimp because I am from that 504, that New Orleans, that (laughs) Lakeview. 
Uh, mm-hmm. And barbecue shrimp is uh, absolutely freaking fantastic. It actually has nothing to do with real barbecue. I think they just call it that because the juice kind of comes out brown. Um, okay. But it is tangy. It is delicious. It is everything you could want in a meal, especially the amount of uh, cholesterol. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's a good one. It's a very good one. Oh, I love uh, Creole food. I think uh, some of it is the best I've ever had. Now, I am mm. hungry for dinner. And I'm going to leave you all 